as if the earth itself was allowing this horror to rise up. You know, it's amazing that in a year with movies like John Cena's Borefest, the pathetic conclusion to the Indiana Jones legacy, and whatever the hell Expendables 4 was meant to be, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is still considered the worst thing to come out that year by many. It wasn't the greatest thing ever, I'll admit that. The second half was pretty awful. But due to the early parts being so memorable for a variety of disturbing reasons, the authenticity of these childhood characters committing such heinous acts provide enough entertainment in the first half alone to at least be worth a single watch. Despite the criticism, a box office return of 5.2 million against a budget of 100,000 is still good, and a sequel was in the works. It didn't take too long to get a trailer either, it's been about a year, and I think it's safe to say the complaints had by so many are not going to be an issue this time. I've given some thought on how I describe this trailer, and what I've come up with is promising. It's not too uncommon nowadays for horror movies to go completely off the rails, with insane violence and concepts so ridiculous you can't help but love it. So it's not surprising Blood and Honey 2 has gone down that route. Because, like I said, the first movie was kind of like that, with scenes of Christopher Robin being whipped with Eeyore's remains, followed by being sprayed with his dead fiancé's blood. So it's only fitting the sequel would do the same thing, but even more insane insane. Bear traps being used for who knows what, a crazy deformed man who must affect the plot somehow, and even a fucking flaming chainsaw, meaning the kills are gonna be a lot more unique and the body count is gonna be much bigger. Obviously, the effects are completely different, it doesn't even look like the same movie, and thanks to a larger disposable cast, the possibilities are all but endless. As predicted in my analysis, Piglet has returned, and was not killed off by a couple of hits, but what I found odd is they've added Tigger and Owl, but Rabbit is still absent. He was mentioned in the first movie along with Owl and Eeyore, while Tigger seemed to be forgotten. This is obviously for domain reasons when the first movie came out, but it does lead me to question what's going on here. Despite the first movie being disliked, I kind of got the feeling this one is gonna do well, at least money-wise, so it could be for future sequels. One thing I am happy about is the original cast seems to be gone. That's really only Christopher Robin, the others are dead. Doesn't really matter who wears the costumes. And I feel Scott Chambers will be a significant improvement over Nicola Leone because he kind of sucked. I'm not a fan of insulting actors when it comes to independent movies, but he really wasn't that good, and repeating the same thing over and over again didn't help. That's more of a script issue than the acting, but hopefully it won't be a problem this time. One thing I do question is the plot. We don't know much about it yet. Some character named Billy is mentioned, along with whatever the aforementioned deformed guy is doing. But a lot of things are brought up in this trailer that don't seem to fit with the first movie. For example, there's something about them not staying buried, which based on what I've read is likely a result of Christopher Robin telling people about them, meaning revenge on everybody this time, I suppose. But it does feel a bit out of place to me. Again, I get the first movie wasn't popular, but I kind of like the simplicity of it just being he left to go to college, thus abandoning them, and this seems to be completely different. I'm not complaining, just a bit of speculation, but I've always felt that sequels shouldn't be that different. If you told me it was a sequel that ignores the first movie completely, I'd probably believe that. But that's really my only thing. Aside from that, everything about this looks great. We know not to judge things based on trailers, so I won't. But potentially, this could be the film we all wanted in the first place. Childhood Disney characters rampaging in unique and violent ways, and scenes that'll destroy your childhood if you're one of those freaks who thought it'd be a good idea to threaten the creators. In many ways, it kind of reminds me of Terrifier, as the most recent movie, despite being a sequel, felt more like the beginning, and the one we're about to get feels more like the continuation. I know a lot of people love the original, but in my case, extreme violence isn't enough to keep me engaged, so to me, the second movie is the true beginning. 
Blood and Honey is kind of like that, but not so much because the first movie had no plot, uh, more so because it sucked and looked completely different. Odds are you wouldn't even have to see it to get anything out of this, none of it seems that relevant here, and despite a couple of nitpicks, I am really excited about this. It could be a blood-filled masterpiece with my few concerns being unfounded, or it could be yet another letdown. My prediction is it'll be good. The potential is clearly there, and with a release date of just over a month away, the wait won't be that long. If not, well, at least it'll be something memorable. I think it's overly apparent that it won't be a complete waste of time. But I'm the analyst, and remember kids, independent films definitely can fail. But unlike Disney, it's not guaranteed. So, you've made it to the end. That's an impressive feat indeed. Since you managed that, I guess check out the gaming channel, in which I cover a variety of gaming topics, like analysis videos, such as this one. If you're into that, then press the link in the description. It's that simple.